This episode of Film Ride is brought to you by Domain.com. Today on Film Ride, we are talking to the always awesome Shane Hurlbut. Welcome to Film Ride, the show that takes mystery out of the effects techniques. Going to some of your favorite Hollywood films, I'm your host, Ryan Conley, and today we are very lucky to have Shane Hurlbut on the show. I was able to have a Skype conversation with Shane to pick his brain about cinematography, and he does not disappoint. If you live under a rock and don't know who Shane is, he's the incredibly talented DP behind films like The Greatest Game Ever Played, Terminator Salvations, Need for Speed, and the upcoming Fathers and Daughters, not to mention being an incredible source for education with his newly launched online platform and his current cinematography tour, all of which I'll talk about at the end. So to not waste any more time, let's jump right into the interview. All right, cool. So to jump right into it, thank you for taking the time, of course. But I guess my first question would be, just to start us off, your your first film as DP was uh, Skulls, right? No, it was The Rat Pack. But that was for HBO, right? Yeah. So your fir- But your first theatrical was... Yeah, the theatrical um, feature was The Skulls, yeah. Was there much of a difference between the two, going for TV or going for theatrical? Only the aspect ratio, really. It was the same director, so we really had a, a great kind of collaboration together, and he wanted kind of the same look that I did for uh, the Rat Pack with the Skulls. Right. So uh, I was able to take all that uh, information that I had and turn it into... You know, trying to come up with like the cool shots and the the way to tell the story the best and the emotion and all those kind of things. So that that was, of course, film, which most of your uh, catalog is film, I assume. But lately you've been switching pretty much entirely over to digital. Uh, do you ever see yourself shooting film again, or you just see digital from here on out? No, I think I would shoot, I, I would do a hybrid, I think. Uh, yeah. There's no reason to go back to film for any night work. For me, I don't think it makes any sense. So I would, uh, when I was going to, I was slated to do Heist with DreamWorks, and then uh, Tom Cruise ended up going to MI5, so that movie went into turnaround. Uh, I was going to shoot film for 70% of it and 30% was going to be the C500 uh, for all the night stuff. So it's like I'm really big to the, on the hybrid process. I, I think it's, uh, it's something that I've done, you know, starting back to back to Valor where I shot, you know, on four or five different formats. And, and I, I continued that on Need for Speed. And I think it's, it's, a, it's the best recipe because it's kind of exploiting every camera's best feature. Yeah. You know, and using it to its advantage. Which which uh, brings up another question that I see asked a lot, um, especially newbie filmmakers. It's like, you know, how do you choose the right camera for the project? Because I'm less about gear and more about what the gear will give you, which I feel like you are as well. So in prepping for the film, like how do you decide what camera you're going to go with for that film? And on top of that, what, what does the prep look like for you for any given film? Well, if you take Need for Speed for an example, that I really wanted to find uh, that film's soul because we wanted to go with something that was a unique look. We wanted it to be as real as possible. Uh, and we wanted to find that camera that de- that delivered reality. So finding that sensor that would do that was, you know, a challenge for all of us. And we we did nine different formats, and we we tested them all, and we sat in the theater on a forty foot screen, and we chose the C five hundred, the Arri Alexa, the One DC, and the GoPro. Those were the four that we felt would help tell the story the most unique and the most realistic. The story kind of tells you what is the right tool to shoot, and I just kind of go with that as much as possible. I see what's out there, and then I'm, I kind of take what does the best things for these specific applications. When I did Fathers and Daughters, I'm prepping that movie, and we're shooting the movie, 80% of it, on the movie. Wow. Well, what cinematic camera can be put on the movie? You have the red, and you have the red, <laughs> and you have the C500. I mean, there's really nothing else you can put on that thing, right? So at the time, we didn't have the M15, so it was only the M10. So I knew if I did go with the red Epic, I couldn't fly any cinema glass. I had to fly either still glass or glass that I didn't want to fly. 
So the C500 mixed with the uh, Cook S4 Primes, just trimmed out at about 17 pounds, just enough under the M10's uh, limit. And so that the camera motion and what we were going, what the director wanted for the vision told us exactly what to use because yeah. there weren't any other options. During the prep, when you're combing through the script, do you kind of like look at the scenes and envision what you want to do lighting wise beforehand or do you wait till you step on set and see where you are and then go from there? No, the, the, and this is what this kind of illumination uh, experience cinematography tour is kind of all about. It shows you the process yeah. uh, from uh, discovery to creation to execution. And uh, that's kind of the process that, that I go through. So it's, it's meeting with the director. It's uh, kind of getting his ideas and what he wants the film to feel like and the tone. And uh, then out of that, you uh, find your inspiration. You, uh, I go to still photography, so I show people how I go to still photography and look for, look for uh, inspiration and how the tone and the mood and kind of the the composition and all that kind of stuff could be, and then out of that you kind of start to design your visual landscape and your. You know, I do what I call an emotional breakdown. Yeah, and the emotional breakdown is you you take each character and you assign a camera emotion to each character and an alighting emotion. So, for example, uh, let's say Fathers and Daughters that I did, uh, Amanda Seyfried's character was, she had no foundation. She didn't have any brick and mortar. It was like her foundation was sand. So what camera emotion will give you that? So we thought, okay, let's think about handheld, right? Well, that could be a little raw and a little like you know, unnerving, kind of wrong thing to say. Steadicam. Well, it's kind of floaty and it's definitely a language we've seen. What about the movie? It's not handheld. It's not a Steadicam. It's somewhere in the middle. It has a whole new kind of energy to it. So that became Amanda's camera emotion. And then out of that, you start to dive into the emotion of what the scene is talking about and then you assign lighting emotion to all that and it's lighting things in different ways to uh create an impact uh there's a sequence on the tour where i i ask people to think i, I don't talk at people for 12 or 10 hours i i'm asking them to think i'm asking them to to weigh in on decisions and to give me their points of view and and it's very interactive and immersive and people are always up and doing stuff and they drive the whole energy of the course it's and uh you know, they're, I let them fail and then I catch them and, uh, you know, put them back on the track and, and guide them and, and try to challenge them out of their comfort zone. I just have a couple more questions and then I'll let you go. I don't want to take up too much of your time. Uh, but a few things that I'm, I'm always really interested, especially, uh, again, going back to new filmmakers, a lot of things seem extremely mysterious. There's just not that much info out there until now with the stuff that you guys are doing. But uh, one thing that people are constantly asking me, and I'm even curious about, is, is what does the, the relationship between a cinematographer and a director look like? Because on the very low end, like with, you know, there's a lot of online filmmaking right now, it's usually, you know, the, the director is everything else too, which is not, you know, optimum, but that's usually what you have to do. So after a while, you move into actually working with uh, an experienced cinematographer and a lot of directors don't know exactly how to work that relationship. So is there any tips that you could give for new directors that are going to be working with a cinematographer for the first time? Yeah, I mean, I think come in with a point of view. You know, you want to want to have a point of view. You want to and you'll know that person and how you guide and, and kind of uh, be able to show him your point of view and, and show him examples and see what he's responding to. Show him scrap reference material. Uh uh, still photography, everything to kind of, you know, some people will tell you exactly what they want. Some people can't really put a handle on it, some directors, and then you start showing it to them and they know exactly, oh, yes, this, oh, no, I don't like that. And then you start to uh, understand the, the shooting style and how they want to roll out. I mean, 
on Fathers and Daughters, Gabriel Muccino embedded the shot list into the script. I mean, how awesome is that, right? I mean, every department head, everyone that's on the movie is getting the script. Russell Crowe, when he's reading it, he's knowing exactly what his coverage is when he walks into the room. Right. And that's immersive. That is, that's making movies. That's awesome. Right? And then I sh uh, shadow that with what I call the look. So every scene, you know when you're going to walk on the set, it's going to either be lit blue, it's going to be gold, it's going to be this, it's going to be white, it's going to be moody, it's going to be, you know, all these different things. I do in a, you know, paragraph description on every scene, what the camera's going to feel like, what the, what the light is going to feel like. So mixed with the shot list and this, the production design knows that I'm going to light this gold, so he's not going to paint the walls gold because it's going to be too much. You know, it's like everyone starts to pull off of these documents and you're making one person is making a movie with uh, hundreds of people instead of hundreds of people making their own movie. Right. right. And that's what you find a lot of times you get on those films, you know, wardrobes making their own movie, production designs making their own movie. Everyone's making their own movie. And then we all get together and we try to make it, you know, happen. Right. where I really felt Gabriel uh, Muccino really united everyone. And, you know, Bill Paxton was another one on The Greatest Game. Everyone was infused in understanding exactly how this film was going to look and feel. And, and uh, then you really, you can all fire on 12 cylinders, let's say. That's awesome. And uh, uh, last question, uh, which we kind of covered a little bit, but what can people expect from the uh, Illumination class if they were to attend? The Illumination experience is really uh, understanding cinematography at its core. It's the why you do things and then we go into how. It's understanding just subtle lighting and subtle lens camera tweaks to take something that would look kind of ordinary and make it extraordinary. It's not just about lighting, it's the art of cinematography, it's filmmaking in general, it's storytelling. It's storytelling because I'm you, you tell stories with the lens, you tell stories with the performance, and we're getting really good actors to play in these scenes, so it's not like I'm ripping people out of the, out of the uh, audience and uh, saying, okay, emote on the scene, uh, we, we send, all the videos out to all our actors and they rehearse them and they come in and they got the lines nailed so it feels just like a movie set. Uh, when you take the master class, uh, I send you um, all the scripts so you can break them down that night and start to formulate your plans of how you would shoot it and what camera emotion and what lighting emotion and then you're given still frames of what the exterior looks like and then they have to be able to make the interior feel like it's some motivation from the outside is coming yeah. inside. I mean, it's, it's so cool. I mean, when That's you awesome. start to see everything that we've put into this process and trying to set it up for bringing Hollywood to all these cities. Well, thanks for doing it. I will definitely be at one of the classes coming here. You're coming soon. to Chicago, aren't you? Yep. I'll be there in Chicago to watch uh, the mad scientist at work. <laughs> <laughs> so again, thank you very much for doing this. I can't wait to put this episode out. I think people are going to love it. Excellent. Thank you very much, Ryan. Thank you. Main.com is a place to go if you're trying to get yourself seen on the interwebs. If you want to make a website for websites making so people can see your face on the world wide webs. Go to Domain.com. They got the hosting services that are reliable and affordable. They got the Domain Discovery service to help pick the right name for you. And if you use the coupon code FILMRIGHT at checkout, get 15% off your domain name and web hosting. Because when you think domain names, think, think Domain.com. What? Belly buttons. I was wondering why you were weird. so quiet over Belly there. Belly buttons are kind of weird. They're like an inverted nipple. <laughs> Logo. So there you have it. Shane is always a wellspring of information. And this isn't even half the interview. If you're interested in seeing the full 45 minute interview with Shane, jump over to our Film Right Extra channel right here and check that out. He goes into much more depth with a lot of info and has some great things to say about film school and getting your start in the industry. So definitely check that out. Also, if you're interested in checking out Shane's Illumination Tour, which you really should be, check that out on their website right here for all the sign up info and everything. We were able to get them to hook us up with a coupon code for film writers. So if you sign
sign up for the class, use the coupon code right here for $25 off. I'm not making any money off this whatsoever. We just got that coupon code to try to help out our Film Riot family. And if you haven't already, you should definitely sign up for Shane's Inner Circle, which is basically digital mentoring in a lot of ways. I signed up for this day one when it went live. I really think it's one of the best resources to come online yet. So check that out right here and get your learn on and whatnot. But that's it and I'll see you guys next time when I take the promotion to get the clearance I need to find the girl of my dreams.